Welcome to another episode of Kent Hans, the best storyteller in Texas podcast. Chancellor Hans, let's get started like we always do with the saying of the day. Saying of the day, the person that views the world at age 50 is the same as age 20 when they were 20, has wasted 30 years of their life. That's from Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, he had a lot of sayings. Some were pretty funny. Some were you kind of wondered about, and some were pretty well on target. But uh, he he was always uh, talkful and uh, had had a lot to say, in uh, whether he was winning or losing. And, and you know, uh, boxers, uh, the the uh, there's a comeback uh, that Mike Tyson is uh, going to come back and fight somebody, an Irishman that. Uh, He's going to fight a YouTuber. A YouTuber. Young, a YouTuber, yeah. yeah that uh, has not lost. Right. That's been fighting a bunch of over-the-hill you know, guys. There was a video not long ago. Uh, a guy on an airplane, Tyson was sitting in front of him, and he kept messing with him and, and thumped him. Don't thump Mike Tyson. If you're going along and run into him, say, it's sure nice to see you, Mr. Tyson. <laughs> you know, be, be nice. <laughs> and uh, he turned around and just – turned completely around and was on his knees in his seat and he just his his fist was like a machine gun it was just bam 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 and and the guy you know went down pretty fast uh don't try to pick a fight with mike tyson you're gonna lose in more ways than one don't poke a bear yeah (laughs) leave him alone and then wonder what wonder what happened to me well you know why did this happen very foolish uh interesting Study that just came out, I know that you saw it, but most Americans now think that the nine to five job is an outdated idea. That's because they're lazy, uh, in my opinion. They think a nine to five job, well, that's out of date. And of course, Bernie Sanders, uh, the socialist from, and he runs as a socialist uh, from uh, Vermont, he thinks that they'll do away with the 40 hour week and make it 32 hours that you'd you'd have three days off. I think that comes from uh, when the pandemic came about. Uh, very few people overall are back to working nine to five or eight to five, whatever they were working. They've, they've made changes. What period in your life, at what age were you working the most hours? Do you remember? Was it when you were in Congress? When I was in Congress, uh, you, you just didn't, especially during certain times of session, when I was in the legislature, uh, you know, April and May were just, it, you had very little time because all the bills were coming up and they had a deadline. Uh, Congress, uh, when I uh, carried President Reagan's tax cut in 1981, there were days that uh, I'd start at 6 and, and get through about 1 or 2 in the morning, and, uh, and you still hadn't gotten everything done. And that uh, you, you, members of Congress uh, that work it hard, and, and that most of them do, uh, they they put in a lot of hours, and uh, they uh, they do that in a way that you know they don't complain about it or anything because that's part of the job. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to get around and you're representing five six hundred thousand people, you, you've got to get around to see them. Uh, I th- I think a congressman that doesn't have a, a town hall meetings. Uh, that you're you're not doing a good job. It, it's just a, a town hall meeting brings you back to reality. I, I always told people if you're going to have a town hall meeting, when you walk in the auditorium and somebody's already got his hand up and he's had his hand up for 30 minutes, don't call on him first. He's nut. He's <laughs> he, he's going to get it started in the wrong direction. Call on the mayor or somebody that says thank you for showing up and you know allowing us to say what we want to say and what we're feeling. And you'll get some very blunt you know, statements, but you'll also say, get some good ones. And I had a lady say, you know, I, this is a stupid question, but in uh, about two or three years later, Reagan signed her stupid question into law in a uh, Rose Garden. Can a typical person, let's say their congressman never has a town hall meeting, can you, can you, you can go see him. Can, uh, can you make him have a town hall you, meeting? You can, try, you can try to go see him. Uh, you know, if they think that you're a nut, they're probably not going to give you a very good appointment. But uh, one time we had a guy kept bugging me, wanting to see me uh, when I was in Washington. And one morning he called in, and and uh, it was, we'd just gotten there. It was about 8 o'clock, 8.15 or something. 
And uh, this lady, the receptionist, uh, uh, Patty Powell, said, this guy's calling again, and he wants to wants see you again today. And I said, tell him to be here at 430. I'll see him, knowing that he wasn't going to get there from Lubbock 430. About 4.15, he walked into the office, <laughs> and, and I saw him, and, and he he was uh, unusual, and uh, but uh, I, I listened to him and, uh, you know, um, kind of made a friend with him, but uh, we never did tell him that. He'd be here at 4.15, 4.30, and he shows up at 4.15, and she came in the office and said, you won't believe this, but he's here. And I said, who's here? She said, the guy that we told this morning to be here at 4.30, we'll, we'll see you. Wow. And I said, we got to see him then. Didn't you have a student when you were chancellor at, at Tech, didn't you have a student that somehow made his way to you about something, and you had to tell him, look, you need to – I don't know how you got here. but No, that that was a, a guy that was there to see me about construction, and uh, he had bypassed some people, and, and he had gotten in to see me, and uh, he knew a relative of mine and had told uh, my assistant Linda Steele that, and she would put him on schedule. But – but usually, if they're they've got to go through see uh, someone in the construction uh, part of the chancellor's office, and he was talking to me about this, and finally I said, "Hold on, how'd you get in here?" <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I just wanted to know, yeah. uh, and he was a nice guy, and and uh, I don't know if he ever wound up doing any business or not, but we had to explain to him what procedure you go through. To, but, but he was starting at the top, you know. He didn't he didn't waste any time. He was let's go to the top. Yeah, he kind of kind of admire got, that. Got, got, I I did admire it, and we and we worked him in the schedule, and he met with the vice chancellor for construction, and uh, and I, I don't know if he got a job or not. And got to give him a lot of A for effort, right? Well, that's you know getting a job or not. Like I've told the story about the the guy that hit me up and. United Supermarket on aisle two and told me what a great job I was doing and everything. And, and, uh, I thanked him and went on and I was over on aisle 15 and he came back up and he said, look, can I use you as a reference? I'm trying to get a job at tech. I said, the hell of a job. I've only known you since aisle two. You know, I mean, this, uh, I got to have more than a 13 hour relationship. You know, got to think through this buddy. Um, Chester, how many grandchildren do you have? We've got seven. Seven grandkids. I was wondering what your take on this. There was a, a list that came out. It was 15 things we miss about being a kid. And one of the things on the list was being spoiled, rotten, by your parents and grandparents. You know, I, I saw that, and I kind of felt bad because I never had grandparents. All my grandparents were dead when I was born. Wow. I didn't so I, I, I never had one. That's the reason I've worked hard at trying to uh, – be close to my grandchildren and talk to them a lot and be around them. And, and they're a lot of fun and, uh, I love them all. The, uh, uh, I, I think one thing that somebody told me, the reason grandparents and, and grandchildren get along so well is they have a common enemy and, uh, <laughs> that, that, uh, that they have to work together, you know, on that common enemy. <laughs> grandkids are fun though. I bet. Oh yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun. And you could send them home. Yeah, you send them home, and and uh, I always uh, my uh, uh, daughter Susan, she had a couple of boys, and when they were little, I'd get to playing with them, get them stirred up, and it's bedtime, and they weren't ready to go to bed. <laughs> Don't stir them up, Daddy. <laughs> yeah. Stir them up, you're gonna have to take them, uh, and uh, so it it was a lot, a lot of fun. Still is a lot of interesting things that are turning fifty years old this year. One of them uh, is Post-it notes. Posted notes, you know, there was a guy invented a weak glue, and no one used it or found any use for it for about six years. And then some guy was trying to post some uh, notes uh, in a hymnal, and and so he used the weak glue and some note cards and, and note paper, and, and that's how the, you know, posted notes got started. And, and he, it wouldn't do it in this day and time because there's very few hymnals left in the uh, churches. You know, the churches on music, and I, I'm not being critical, it's just they've kind of been taken over by the Bebop of Jesus movement, you know, and <laughs> and, uh, and I like to sing the old rugged cross or blessed assurance or how uh, great I, thou art. Yeah, we, we had uh, at the uh, chapel at uh, Texas Tech, uh, we had a 
deal one time had a uh, Lubbock choir group sing hymns and uh, they uh, uh, they sing and they were supposed to start at five o'clock and, and we'd shut it down letting people in at 4 30 because they filled it up hmm. so there are people out there that like hymns uh alan jackson had uh, a hymn uh, album of different hymns and uh it was uh, one of the best sellers that for uh, religious songs that they've ever had and you know you there's a lot of singers especially in country music that started singing in the church i mean elvis started out singing elvis gospel did. then you also had and i think there were cousins there's jimmy swaggart and uh then he had uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, mm-hmm. and, but there's two different you know, <laughs> individuals, that, uh, that a lot of difference in, in them. And there was somebody else that he had, was it uh, Mickey Gilly? I, I think they all started in the same Assembly of God church, and uh, they could sing. Uh, Larry Gatlin and Rudy and Steve Gatlin, the Gatlin brothers, uh, they started, their mother had them singing in, uh, uh, in church, and that uh, they... Uh, they were pretty good, and they got better and better, and and uh, they uh, have, they still sing and still still do concerts. You mentioned Mickey Gilly, one of my favorite songs of all time. All the girls all get prettier at closing, closing time. time. <laughs> you know uh, that, that that would be a true statement that uh, uh, somebody didn't have to think long and hard before that one. That uh, <laughs> they all get prettier near closing time. Another thing turning 50 years old uh, this year, barcodes. Barcodes, big, big business, and, and it uh, helped business move groceries faster and other items faster, but especially groceries. And, uh, and it didn't allow people to take price tags off of one can and put it on another can <laughs> and save a little money. And, and sure. uh, Then you had to train all your cashiers to make sure that they, you know, uh, they would recognize that somebody had switched uh, a price tag, but barcodes did away with that. And barcodes now, you know, I, I, I go to the self checkout at grocery stores and, uh, you can do it pretty fast. Mm-hmm. It helps with inventory too. It helps with inventory. They know what they've got and they know when they're running low on certain things. Uh, another, uh, Skittles, the candy are 50. Skittles remind me too much of, uh, jelly beans. And, uh, I've, <laughs> I've told the jelly bean story. I went to the White House when uh, Reagan was president, and he loved jelly beans. That's that's one the one area I didn't agree with him. And so he had this, you know, a, a big jar of jelly beans, and it had a little scoop in it. And he said, "Let me get you some jelly beans." Okay, okay, Mr. President. And he he gave me a, a gave me a napkin, and then poured a scoop full of jelly beans on the napkin and more. And so, stupid me, I just went through it and I ate it real fast. And he said, oh, Congressman, hands out <laughs> jelly beans. And he got me some more jelly beans. I ate them one at a time, taking about as long as possible <laughs> on each jelly bean. And uh, because they stick to your teeth and, and uh, they're they're just nasty. But some people love them, and, and that's the reason you have more than one kind of candy. It's about jelly bean season with Easter coming up too for yeah, sure I, i'll probably pass on that uh, giving out jelly beans uh, i won't give you jelly beans <laughs> if i give you jelly beans you know that we're in but we're our relationships in <laughs> bad shape last thing on this list well not the last thing but the last thing of, of, of interest is the heimlich maneuver is was invented dr heimlich years ago. and and before then you're supposed to hit people on the back and keep hitting them on the back until they coughed up you know or broke a few ribs or something and and uh but I, I had, uh, when I went to Congress, they were showing us all kinds of things, and they had a guy talk about the Heimlich maneuver and everything. And about two years later, uh, my sister from Amarillo, Beth Hodges, she was up there with her husband, and, and I, I was seated across from her, and we were eating at a nice restaurant, and she choked up. You know, and I could tell what was wrong, and, and uh, Jack, her husband, hit her on the back, and I got up and went around and, and pulled her up and gave her the Heimlich deal, and, and uh, she made a cough, and then she she was fine. Huh. And um, 
you know, I told her, I wish I'd done that in Lubbock or, you know, someplace in my district so I could look good, but <laughs> I did it in Washington, D.C. No, no, no one cared. She, uh, she really cared because she couldn't breathe. The congressman and, saves life. Yeah, the congressman <laughs> saves life. And uh, so uh, d- didn't get any benefit from that. But uh, it, uh, it, I think it really scared her, and, uh, and I was glad I knew what to do. I thought they were wasting their time when they, you know, but but the guy that taught us said, "Hey, look, if somebody at one of your town hall meetings, you know, needs this and you can do it, uh, you'll look real good." Good thing to know that in CPR too. Yep, another very good one. I had a a friend when I was in high school, we had a bonfire, and uh, we were you know for homecoming, and we got an old tree that we cut down, different things, and and had had a big bonfire. But while we were stacking the wood. Uh, a big limb fell off a tree and hit my friend from first grade, Mary Barron's, and Mary's a dear friend, and and so she couldn't breathe and knocked the air out of her. Mm-hmm. And people saying hey, we ought to do something, you know. There, everybody kind of panicked, and I said, "Here, I'll give her mouth to mouth." And she said, "I'm okay." <laughs> <laughs> and we still laugh about that at class reunions. I saved her life by just threatening to give mouth to mouth resuscitation. She went, I'm okay. You know? <laughs> so uh, the, it, it had a good ending. Well, speaking of uh, food and stuff, I saw that the uh, Cincinnati Northern Kentucky Airport has the best fast food uh, out there and air, in airports. I, I think they do. They they have a lot of change. You know, in Austin, they, they don't like change. They, you know, and, and I like, I like change uh, because if I'm going into McDonald's, I know what I'm going to get. You know, and, and and I know it's going to be uh, correct. Uh, if I'm going in huts, if it, you know, I, I, it may be really good. I've never had a bad one, but you don't know how consistent it's going to be. But uh, they uh, they've convinced Austin that that uh, the local people need need the first push at it. And you're a uh, you've always said many times that uh, you tip based on the speed of uh, the the food. Correct. Yeah, I, I went to a basketball game. Uh, in uh, Waco, Texas Tech was playing Baylor. And I went and I was running a little late and I stopped at El Chico's and a kid came over. He was going to get more. I said, I want an enchilada dinner and uh, iced tea and I give you $100 and you can keep the rest. If by the time I go to the restroom, you're back here with it. <laughs> and so really? I went to the restroom and I came back and he was running, sprinting <laughs> with my cheese enchiladas. He got over the table and I gave him a hundred dollars. We we called it even. We were, he was happy and I was happy. Oh, the power of the hundred dollar bill. Yeah, you know, I mean, he he was uh, he he was going to be a a real uh, American business person. I bet he's told that story a thousand times. Too, oh yeah, since, since he left there, yeah. that's very funny. Uh, we'll stay with the food thing just a little bit. I know you're a Sonic guy, but Dairy Queen. It was pandemonium uh, earlier this week at Dairy Queen says they gave out uh, free ice cream. Spring day, spring day. They, they gave out free ice cream. It, it wasn't huge. It wasn't a double decker or anything, no. and it was the soft, uh, you know, ice cream. It, it's good, and uh, they had a lot of people lined up to get their free free ice cream and uh that dairy queen took took good care of them. It, the country fried steak you know and chicken fried steak uh at at dairy queen uh th- those are noted and uh, they advertise that in the belt buster and mm-hmm. things like that uh so uh, it's pretty funny the that people uh they get used to certain things the, you know they're in a lot of small towns and so uh they may be the only you know place in small town that you you can eat at Mm -hmm. they had a had a place called the green frog in little old town out west texas one time and you say is the only place uh that they'd seen a cafe where the flies were fighting to get out (laughs) (laughs) they weren't trying to get in they just wanted out (laughs) it's a little rough Uh, those small town dairy queens add up and texas has the most dairy queens of any state is that right in the united states ohio comes in a distant second i did not realize that. with that uh a real estate agent had a really bad day accidentally burnt down a million multi-million dollar property yeah that that was in australia and it took him about two years as a lawsuit filed over it to, to get it finalized but the real estate company was found liable and she took up like a mat and threw it over something to to move it 
and it, and it was a light. It was a heating lamp. And then she turned down the the, the heating lamp, and you know, and it got hot enough it caught on fire. <laughs> and uh, you talking about bad luck and not anticipating. Uh, she didn't anticipate on that and uh, burned the house down. And, uh, you know, a little hard to sell at that point. <laughs> and to get more listings. Yeah. Probably a little bit difficult. Before we wrap up today, just a quick reminder uh, to follow us on social media uh, at the best at best storyteller podcast on Instagram. And uh, also, we'd love to hear from you. We've got quite a few emails recently. And by the way, I got I got one and I'm looking on the details of somebody in Houston uh, wanted to know, you know, wanted some factual information to back it up that uh, Austin had more people living downtown than mm-hmm. any city except New York City. I'm working on that. Somebody at the Chamber of Commerce told me that one time, and I'm trying to figure out who it was and uh, maybe even get them on the program and uh, let them let them tell about it. But uh, if if you send in a question, uh, I, I, I'll keep a list of them. We won't just blow you off or forget it. Send your email to info at hanspodcast.com. Stupid criminal. Dad called the... Yeah, th- this one, I mean, this guy was an idiot. Not only was he a stupid criminal, but he's an idiot. He, ca- he called a school, elementary school, that they're giving too much homework to her, for his son. And uh, called and called and called. And then he called the cops 18 times to report they were given to. What do you want them to do? Go over and arrest the teacher for giving a hard <laughs> assignments? Uh, you know, I mean, that, that shows that uh, he, he wasn't real bright. No. And uh, Poor know, kid. It, yeah, that, I mean, a poor kid to have a dad like that. Yeah. Did your dad call uh, the cops 18 times because of our homework? Uh, yeah, he did. Uh, aren't you glad? I mean, you know, that, that's not something you'd want uh, your classmates to know. No, it's not. Uh, what we wrap up, remind everybody of the saying of the day from Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali said, if you think the same on something at age 50 as you did at age 20, you've wasted 30 years. <laughs>